Hi everyone, we are back on Bitcoin. We are still discussing the Bitcoin, this interesting cryptocurrency that is out there. And today we are looking at how is the Bitcoin formed? You know, we know that they've decided there's a certain number of Bitcoins that's going to be produced ever. But I want to understand how, who decides how many are going to be produced? How is it actually mined, you know, digitally? And we're looking at that today. This is Rena Hicks and you're on Money Wise, where we create, grow and preserve wealth. So Raymond. Yes, uh, excited um, to be back again. Thank you so yeah. much for being yes, here. Yes. How, how does the Bitcoin come about? You know, we know with regular currency, you know, we know that it is produced by governments and they have a mint. That, yeah, De La Rue. Yeah. De La Rue, for example, that decides they need to print money or is given the order rather to print the money and they print it. So how does it work with the Bitcoin? Okay, with the Bitcoin, if you study the Bitcoin protocol, the, the invention behind it, that the arena there'll be a fixed amount of Bitcoin in circulation and that number is 21 million. So for me initially when I had this my concern was is 21 million going to be enough for a world population of 7 billion Sounds and growing? Very little. Uh, but I was very impressed to learn that one single Bitcoin can be divided into eight decimal places currently. Give an example, if I need to pay you, you know, out there a million Kenya shillings using Bitcoin, I'll send you 4.1 Bitcoin, you know, right now. For a million, yeah, 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 yeah that exactly. makes sense. And yes. then if I needed to receive 10,000 shillings from you in Bitcoin, you'll send me 0.00, .00 something mm -hmm. of a Bitcoin. So a Bitcoin is quite divisible, you know, eight decimal places. Now, the creation of Bitcoin is through a process known as Bitcoin mining. Now, initially, when I had mining as an engineer, I asked, where is this shamba, you know? Where <laughs> are we going to dig these Bitcoins? But I came to learn this is done virtually or digitally. Yeah. Now, the Bitcoin protocol in the first four years, we call that the first phase, 50 Bitcoins were being released every 10 minutes. Every 10 minutes? Every 10 minutes, you know, first 10 minutes, 10, next 10, next 10. When we came to the second phase, 2012 up to 2016, the release of Bitcoin reduced by half down to 25 Bitcoins every 10 minutes. Right now, Rina, we are in the third phase, where it is it's 12. Each phase is four years. Exactly. So it's roughly four years. So the, the, first, the third phase started when? Uh, ju ju July 10th last year. And it's going to go for Up four to years? 2020. Okay. And then after 2020, another four years, it will reduce by, in, half. by another half. So currently it's 12.5, okay. the next phase will be 6.25, yeah. the phase after that, half that amount. So it keeps on reducing up to the year 2140, 131 years in total. That's how long it's going to take yes, for the for 21, the 21 million to, Amazing. to be issued. Thankfully, we've only gone through eight years. So the balance we are looking at is 123 years, which is your third generation as well as mine. Wow. Uh, so now, back to the process of mining. For you to understand mining, I always use a very simple example of a bank. Rina, if somebody issues you a check, what will you do? I will take you it to bank. bank it. Yes. And then your banker, the other banker, will do something called clearing. Yes. And money moves from one account to the other. Yes. In the Bitcoin world, your bank account is on your smartphone with an app called a Bitcoin wallet. Okay. So when I go to my Bitcoin wallet and I send a Bitcoin to you, yeah. between me and sending me sending and you receiving in between here there has to be a platform to verify whether i have that bitcoin and that platform is mining is an equipment that is run by miners so what miners are doing is basically verifying new bitcoin transactions and the reward is those 12.5 bitcoins currently a whole 12.5 bitcoins yeah, if 12. i mine but successfully if you mine successfully today you get the entire it's called a block reward oh. you collect the entire 12.5 but yeah, right now, 12.5 Bitcoins would uh, put $50,000 in your pocket. Imagine. Now, to earn that in 10 minutes, obviously, you know, that is uh, wow. very lucrative. <laughs> uh, so, so that is what miners do. Yeah. Now, you can imagine, uh, Rina, you own a mining farm somewhere or some mining machines. And I do, and you watching here today, you also have some machines. Now, who decides whether it is your machine or mine or yours that gets to harvest the 12.5 bitcoins? It's an open race. The system says that whoever verifies X number of transactions faster than everybody else collects the entire reward. So all the machines are competing to We're try and solve? We're all competing. Now, uh, with every transaction, there is an algorithm that you know has to be solved. So if your set of machines solves you know, those puzzles 
faster and publishes the result, you collect the 12.5 bitcoins. Who, who sets the puzzle? Like, who decides uh, this is a puzzle to be solved? It's, uh, okay, it, it is set in the architecture of, you know, the protocol itself. Okay. And uh, initially, when mining started eight years ago, it was very simple. But with every year, the mining difficulty increases. So the industry has also evolved. Initially, you could have mined from your laptop, okay. of your desktop. Yeah. And then in the year 2011, people discovered you could use uh, graphics cards, you know, the gaming kind of equipment. Okay. And then right now, uh, those ones are very slow. So we have newer technology called ASIC chips. You know, the latest mining equipment come installed with them. So the industry is evolving. The race here is who has the fastest machine mm. that consumes the least energy. That's very interesting. I've seen people who have invested in warehouses full of yeah. machines yeah. mining bitcoins yes. in Iceland. Yes. Like, why do they need so many? Because it's down to processing power. Now, if you go to bitmain.com today and buy the latest mining equipment, you realize one machine has processing power of 13.5 terahashes per second. I hope I'm not losing it. It's okay, I'll catch up. <laughs> I'll catch up. Uh, so for, for you out there who understand you know, programming or tech IT, you would yeah. know. Now, let's say you have one machine yeah. that has 13.5 terahashes per second. In the video you watch, that gentleman could be having, uh, let's say, 80 pentahashes per second. Mm -hmm. So he has 20,000 times your mining capacity. Wow. And remember, you're fighting to solve the same puzzle. Yeah. So who will get luckier? The faster one. Exactly. It's here, the person with the biggest gun wins. Yeah. So if you have more installed mining capacity, yeah. you have a better chance of harvesting those 12.5 bitcoins than somebody who is doing it from a laptop. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Terahashas. What did you say? Terahashas. <laughs> I will figure that out. But the important thing is to understand yes. that it requires a huge amount of processing power to actually successfully mine now yeah, yeah, yeah. because of the amount of competition that has come. That's through. correct. Yeah. Very interesting. We've been looking at how to mine bitcoins and the process of how bitcoins come about every single day, every 10 minutes of every day. And next, we're going to look at, okay, so the Bitcoins are produced, but how do I benefit? If I want to buy a Bitcoin, can I do that? Um, we initially wanted to look at Central Bank and how Central Bank um, took a position and just said a few things and they released a notice regarding cryptocurrencies. And we're going to take some time to understand where Central Bank was coming from and what that statement was. This is Rena Hicks. Please stay tuned and subscribe for more of these kind of videos. You're watching All Access.